What's up, music fans of the internet? I'm Kevin. I'm Derek. And together we are last week's album, The Only Reviews, with two different views. And in this episode, we're exploring the question, does Jonah Tolkien keep Americana between the ditches on Thousand Mile Night? So let's get into it. Cheers, Derek, and everyone at home. Cheers, Kevin, everyone at home. Jonah Tolkien, not to be confused with everyone's favorite Hobbit author, J.R.R. Tolkien, is a musician. He's originally from New Jersey. I believe he's currently based in Western Massachusetts. He uh, kind of grew up listening to the blues and started playing at a young age. He's played Newport Folk Festival, South by Southwest, and uh, other stages. And this is his third album recorded at Muscle Shoals Legendary Fame Studios. So let's talk about what it sounds like. Derek, what do you think? Kevin, I think Jonah Tolkien sounds like Slade Cleaves, Hayes Carl, and Dawes trading saws at a truck stop in Midwestern America while waiting for their trucks to be finished in the shop. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I actually heard Hayes Carl a little bit myself. Uh, I think it sounds like Lou Reed and Ryan Bingham take a midnight drive to Georgia. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, I, hear, I definitely hear the Ryan Bingham in there. Let's talk about some highlights from the album. What were your favorite parts, Derek? Uh, Kevin, one thing that stood out to me was really just the variety of sounds. It wasn't just country or Americana. There were forays into gospel uh, on Unless You Got Faith. The, there was country western blues on Where the Hell Are All My Friends. Blues rock of Working Man Blues number 22. And then closing track, this Lead Belly-esque acoustic blues of hard time, killing floors. Quite a bit of ground was covered there, just in some of the genres he was alluding to, and I enjoyed them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, one of my favorite parts was the variety of sound as well, um, not just in genre, but also in sort of mood. Uh, there's everything from roadhouse rompers to very mellow ballads, and he can really kind of span not only the musical spectrum, but the sort of emotional and writing um, spectrum as well. That actually kind of ties into the second thing that jumped out to me. Some of the lyrics were very interesting and they were subtly strong at some points. One track where this really jumped out to me was I Wonder. He says, you can love me or hate me, I don't mind. You can take me as I am, I'll be your paradoxical man. But then it goes on some more and he says, it's amazing what you do to hide your soul. Finding your way to free, just struggling to be. When it starts out so simplistically and then jumps, leaps and bounds into very insightful and strong lyrics you know, that will make you think. I really liked his lyrics on Thousand Mile Night. He gets very descriptive and vivid. Um, there's one good line that really jumps out to me every time I hear it. Mississippi preacher smoking in the back seat. I mean, it's just such a tight economical line and paints such a vivid picture in your mind and uh, just really well written. And also on Unless You Got Faith, I liked those lyrics as well. Unless you got faith, definitely. I like how he even pointed out specifically who may need faith. You know, all the teachers and the students too. The single mothers alone and confused. It was almost kind of Dylan-esque in his delivery um, of the vocals there. And then just because it's a gospel tune, he sort of brought in some Mellotron organ that I thought was really nice on that track. Um, I also liked completely, um, just while we're talking about songs in particular, I thought that shows his range, this sort of earnest ballad there's banjo and bells and fiddle. Almost reminded me a little bit of uh, Trampled by Turtles in its sound. I thought the layered vocals in the chorus really sounded a lot like Dawes to me. Another interesting track that jumped out to me, Working Man Blues, number 22. Um, I thought this one kind of had that hungry genre uh, bending vibe of Gary Clark Jr. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could hear that for sure. All right, that's enough highlights. What about lowlights, Derek? I really couldn't find too much to nitpick here, even though it spanned a lot of different sounds and also themes lyrically. I don't ever think it sounded forced or, or out of place or anything, which I think is a big challenge to do, being you know kind of a, a newer in the realm of things. I just have a couple small gripes. Um, I thought he meandered a little bit on a couple of songs. Paint My Love got a little sleepy for me. 
And then where the hell are all my friends? Got a little too sort of aimlessly jammy. I totally agree with you on Pain My Love. I almost think the forlorn lyrics make it sound like the Smiths or the Cure playing a country tune. Wow, that's an interesting idea. The chorus sounded a little too emo to me. Like, I will yeah. paint my love all the colors of the sky, and that's why I cry. I'm just imagining someone painting and crying, and it's a really funny visual. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, is that watercolors? Ooh, nice. I don't know much about art. <laughs> Let's move on from lowlights to overall rating and answering the big question, does Jonah Tolkien keep Americana between the ditches on Thousand Mile Night? What do you think, Derek? Kevin, to answer the big question, I think he likes pushing the envelope, you know, so we can get there on time. I think he achieves that. You, you know, some of the forays into all the different genres maybe aren't as smooth um, around the corners as others. But on the whole, I think he definitely keeps it between the ditches in his own way. Uh, put his, his own stamp on things, if you will. Lyrically, I was very pleasantly surprised. There were kind of a lot of hidden gems here. This one's going to be great for road trips, as the album title may imply. And so that being said, I'm giving this one a four out of five. Nice. I'll agree for the most part. Does he keep Americana between the ditches? I think for sure. Uh, but he also hugs the curves in all the right places just to keep it interesting so no one falls asleep at the wheel or anything. I definitely appreciate his range and still keeping it between the lines, so to speak. I think he's got a great sound. I'm honestly surprised we haven't heard of this guy before, Derek. Um, I'm excited to hear what comes from him next. And uh, yeah, I like this one a lot too, so I'm gonna go with a four out of five as well with Derek's four. That's an eight out of 10 for Jonah Tolkien's Thousand Mile Night. So definitely check out this new record and let us know what you think about it. We'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to us, either here on YouTube or on the podcast. And as always, I'm Kevin. I'm Derek. Cheers, guys. We'll see you next time.